praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, you see the life of um, Temple of Deliverance in the soon coming tomorrows. <laughs> Amen. Just reach over and touch someone beside you. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to thank you again for the assembling of your people together. And we pray that you would anoint these lips of clay, that we might speak words of spirit and life. And whatever you do, we'll be grateful. And we thank you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Let none who have come go away empty, but let all eat and be filled. And let us go home another way. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord another hand of praise. I want to get immediately into the scripture, um, and I will not be before you at any great length because we, uh, although the program was a bit uh, more full than usual, I yet want us to be uh, out by the same time unless the Lord just takes over and holds us longer. From the book of First Samuel chapter 17, and the word that I feel the Lord has given for today, although we might address the message basically to our youths and young adults. It is a message that I believe the Lord will use to speak to the heart of all of his people regardless of age category. First Samuel chapter 17. We want to read verses 22 through 33 in an alternating fashion. I'll read verse 22 and I want you to read verse 23 and we'll alternate from verse 22 through verse 33. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why 
camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine. Fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. All right, we'll stop right there. I want to talk to you about facing the giant with courage facing the giant with courage. God bless you, ushers. Now, I hope that you're not going to sit here and go to sleep on me. Uh, I s certainly, I'm, I don't have the vim, vigor, and vitality and energy of these young folk. I can't put on the production to rival what they've done. But if you wake up, I believe the Lord will give you a word. <laughs> And I believe that every person in here, you are facing at least one giant. And the one thing that I hope to encourage your heart today, to don't allow yourself to fall into heart failure by looking at the giant. But be courageous, face the giant with courage. And whatever the giant in your life is, you too can come out victoriously. Amen? Amen. So look at somebody and tell them, don't be a coward. Don't be a coward. Face your giants with courage. Face your giants with courage. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Now, the situation here is that of Israel, a new nation, now under their first king. But they are fighting an old and persistent enemy. The Philistines or the Philistines, whichever way you might uh, choose to pronounce it. But an interesting thing happens as the two armies are facing each other and the battle is set in array, one Philistine champion decides, why do we need to go through all this? Your armies fighting my armies and a whole lot of different men shedding blood and dying on the battlefield. Why can't we just have one of your champions step out, face me as the champion of the Philistines? And if your champion win, then we'll serve you. But if I win, you all are going to have to serve us. That's pretty much what it says. Look, look back here to, I hope you didn't close your Bible. Look back to the beginning of chapter 17. Look at verse 3. It says, And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, this one champion that says, you know, we don't need to do all this bloodshed and just one on one, and that'll take care of it, he himself was so menacing 
I mean, just to look at him, you know, it says he was six cubits and a span. Now, a cubit is uh, the amount of about 18 inches. And when you multiply 18 inches uh, six times, and then divide it by 12 inches, which comes out one foot, you'll see that he's nine feet. But it said he's six cubits and a span. Now, a span was considered the distance between, say, the little finger and the thumb when you put it down. So actually, uh, the man was almost 10 feet. He was closer to 10 feet than he was to nine. And uh, if you see a big old 10-foot person saying, come on, uh, <laughs> you got somebody who would fight me? It wasn't hardly anybody there. Saul himself, King Saul, was the tallest one, and he was somewhat over six feet. The rest of them were just five foot something and below, and here's one big guy. Come on, I'll fight whoever you send. Uh, here is a guy that's a giant facing those who are not midgets, but they are average size. And to look at a man almost 10 feet would be terribly menacing. Uh, I used to think that Goliath was big until I read up on Og. And when I looked in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 11, I found out that although Goliath was a big giant to the Israelites at this point, uh, Goliath wasn't really nothing but a baby giant. Uh, you look in Deuteronomy 3 and 11 and it tells you that the bed, everybody sleep in king size beds now, you know, it's commonplace. But in that time, uh, Og was sleeping in a bed that was six feet wide and something like 13 feet long. And it is said that Og himself was about 12 feet. So if he had stood in front of Goliath, he would have looked down on the top of Goliath's head. Uh, but to David, as a little boy, saw Goliath as a pretty big giant. And the thing that you've got to remember is that the giants we face, when you look at them, they're kind of menacing. Menacing to look at. Our young people today, they're facing giants that we face plus some more. See, we, we face the giants, young folk, when, uh, how the old folk used to say that about uh, when the sap would rise, you know, and young folks start feeling uh, their body and feeling themselves developing. And the only thing then was a matter of trying to find an opportunity to sneak, you know, and get involved with the giant of sexual pleasure. But see, our young folk now, uh, they are looking at it on television and even in the school. They're telling them that, uh, you know, that's one of your classes, you know, teach sex education. And now they're telling you even the alternative lifestyle, which God burned up Sodom and Gomorrah, burned it to a cinder pile. But now they're teaching it's only an alternative lifestyle. Our young folk have got to face this giant. And in school, instead of it being a place where the values of the scripture, the church, and the home are fostered, school now is where those old-fashioned values are attacked. See, when I was a youngster growing up, uh, we were taught the way of holiness in the home. And although at school they didn't teach holiness, but they taught Christ. You recognize God. You recognize Jesus Christ. You recognize authority. So the values in the home were fostered by the church and by the school. But now when you say it's school time, they're out of your hands. You can't do much with them when it's uh, not school time because they spend more time watching television than they spend sitting around the family table. Some of us can remember that at dinner time and breakfast time, it was family time. We were all together. But nowadays, everybody is on a different shift. You know, if daddy is at home, he's on one shift, and mom is on another shift, and the children are shifting for themselves. And so we are looking at a whole different set of giants today. And every giant 
is menacing when you look at him. He looks like, I don't know how I'm going to pull through this. This giant Goliath, not only was he tall, but when you look at even his attire, it talks about his helmet of brass upon his head. And he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And then he had an armor bearer walking in front of him. He didn't have to carry a shield. His armor bearer walked in front of him with a shield. And to look at this, it would automatically cause one heart to fail. But the next thing we know, David is thrown into a conflict with the giant. And he wasn't thrown into the conflict through any act of his own. The truth of the matter is, when you go back and read it, his father said to him, uh, verse 17 of chapter 17, Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephod of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. Carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of thy thousands and look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. In other words, bring back the report. He only went to take some provisions and he was sent by his father. But the next thing he found himself face to face with a challenge from the giant. You don't always go looking for trouble. People talk about looking for trouble. But sometimes you stumble into it without even looking for it. All you know is that one day you look up and that trouble is. David went down to the battlefield to check on his brothers, but while he was there, he heard the roaring of the voice of a giant saying, is there not anyone among these Israelites that will challenge me? Anybody that will come and fight me? And then he goes to boasting about taking their carcass and feeding it to the fowls of heaven. And the devil is constantly saying that you can't win. That I'm the one, I'm the ruler of the hill. That I'm the one, I'm the ruler of the hill. And you own my territory. And whether you want to bow or not, you are going to bow. And when the giants of this world get through telling you what they are going to do to you. And down in your spirit, something look like wants to tremble. And you want to feel like, oh my God, am I going to be able to escape this thing intact? David stumbled into battle, but he was ready because he went to the battlefield prepared. I'm going to tell you something. The worst thing in the world for you young folk to go back to school as a question mark not knowing where you are. You got to know, you got to have some things and I know education presumes that your mind should be open but there are some things that your mind ought to be closed to. There are some things that you need to go into that philosophy and religion class with a made up mind that I don't care what you say, this is what I believe. You got to have your heart and your mind fixed on Jesus Christ that I don't care. Maybe I can't argue you logically. Maybe I can't get around all of the different ways by which you pose your particular stand. But one thing I know that God is real, that Jesus is real in my life and the experience that I've had with God tells me there's no need for me to be afraid of the giant. Well, David went and said to his brother, I'll fight this fella. And you'd think that his brother would have said, great, he didn't have the courage to fight him. Eliab didn't have the courage. But when David said, I'll fight him, he saw, oh, there you go again. I know the naughtiness of your mind. 
Uh, you just want to come down here and, and try to be an exhibitionist and think that you can do so much. And they just kind of turned their back on him. And King David, or rather King Saul, heard that David had offered to fight him. And, you know, here's a big, strong king, and here's a little old shepherd boy, but he knew that he didn't have anybody else. So he took the position that if I got a little boy here that's crazy enough, maybe I better check him out and at least interview him. David said to King Saul, he said, I'll fight him. Oh, little boy, you are only a youth. Never let anybody tell you that you are only a youth. Paul told Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't know God, you're too young. That you don't know what you're talking about, you're too young. But he's also saying, let no man despise your youth. Don't act in such a way as to make anybody despise you. You know, you can be a child without being childish. You can be young without acting foolish. You can be yet in those tender years, but you can have a faith in God that is mature, steadfast, and unmovable. So David said, well, you think that I can't fight this giant? Let me testify. And I'll be finished in seven minutes. Let me testify. You up here, little boy, going to fight this giant. You can't do it. He said, I want to give you a little bit of my history. I know I'm young now, but when I was younger, my father Jesse had me tending his sheep. That's my job. I just took off a few days just to come down here and check on my brothers and got to get back to the sheep. But, but let me tell you, one night when I was tending my father's sheep, a bear came out of the wood and stuck his big old paw out and grabbed one of my sheep. He said, but let me tell you what I did. <laughs> said, I caught him, and with my own hand, I killed him and delivered my sheep. Oh, come on, David. Wait a minute, I'm not through. He said, another time, a lion. He tried to take one of my sheep. And you know what I did? I caught him by the symbol of his power. I caught him by his beard. <laughs> and when I got through tearing him loose from my sheep, I killed him with my bare hands and delivered my sheep. And he didn't just say it like a story he'd memorized, but he said it like one who had had experience. Oh, I tell you sometimes you can listen to testimonies and some folk, you know, all they're doing is flow showing. You know, this is my time, so since I got the flow, I'm just going to perform. And that's why so many times we don't even have testimony service. You, you, you have some folk make you shame you having testimony service. Uh, you <laughs> don't want to go that way. But this young fella, he told his story in such an effective way until Saul said, you know, boy, it must be something. You got something. I tell you what, you better take my, take my sword and come on and put on my garments. And take my shield. And you go on out there and fight him. David tried to pick up the sword and there it is dragging the ground. And picks up his shield and he can hardly drag it. Man, I, I don't know nothing about this stuff. Take it. Let me have what I have proven. Give me my slingshot. Oh, sometimes you got to use what you have proven. You got to use what God has given you. Don't, don't waste your time trying to be somebody else. I was listening this morning to my cousin, Minister uh, Charles Patterson, and, and I was watching him. He wasn't trying to be his daddy, his granddaddy, or nobody. He was just himself. Too many young folk waste their life trying to be somebody else. Let others inspire you, but be yourself. Hallelujah. Don't worry. If, if you're not able to get into the beauty pageant, don't let anybody tell you that you are ugly. You're not ugly, you're unique. 
God made you the way he wanted you to be. Don't spend your time bleaching your skin until it becomes another color. God made you the texture that he wants you. God gave you the hair that he wants you to have. God gave you all of the personality. Touch somebody and tell them, don't try to be somebody else. Develop yourself and be the best you that you can be. Oh, hallelujah. David said, I have not proven these things. Give me my slingshot. And then he walked down to the brook and picked up five smooth stones. Say what you want to. God can use you when he get the rough edges off. God can use you when he, when he gets through shaving down that temper and shaving down all of those other youthful attributes that are not pleasing. Paul said to Timothy, flee youthful lusts. Oh, I know that there's some things that are just natural, but when you get Jesus down on the inside... <laughs> And I, I, you may not agree with this, but let me tell you, the Christian lifestyle is a learned behavior. The Lord will save you. He will sanctify you. But cleansing your ways comes from adhering to the principles of the scripture. When you get saved, you can still do anything you ever did. You can still smoke, you can still drink, you can't. God doesn't take away your ability to do it, but he takes away your desire to follow the crowd and he gives you a desire to live like he wants you to live. So you learn how to be a child of God. Hello, somebody. And, and, and when God changes your heart, your mind, your attitude, Every time you read in the Bible, it doesn't matter what the crowd is doing. If God says, this is what I want you to do, then you smooth that edge off. <laughs> Hallelujah. He picked up five smooth stones, put one of them in the slingshot, four of them in his bag. And then he starts winding up. Hallelujah. So your name Goliath, you're the champion of Gath, huh? Mm-hmm. This rock got Gath on it. I've told you many times as a youngster growing up, I couldn't understand it. Why did he need to put five stones? Why he need four in his bag and one in the slingshot? Why did he need five when he wasn't going to use but one? But during my study of the Philistines, in the book of Judges, we came across that. How that they had five lords that reigned in five capital cities. They had the city of Ashdod, Ekron, Ashkelon, Gath, and Gaza. And Goliath was the champion from Gath. But he knew that the devil fights dirty. Don't, don't fool yourself talking about playing by the rules. Tell somebody, the devil fights dirty. <laughs> he didn't know whether or not after defeating the champion of Gath that the Lord of Gaza might send his champion. The Lord of Ekron and Ascalon might send that champion. The Lord of Ashdod might send his champion. So he had four rocks in his bag saying that after I defeat the champion of Gath, if one of the others send that champion, I got a rock in my bag for them also. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter how many textbooks you have to buy, don't leave your rock bag. You got enough rocks in this bag for anything the devil throw at you. And here Goliath is rowing and ranting and raving and 
shining every time the sun would hit that glittering spear every time the sun would hit that coat of mail sometimes it would be blinding in the eyes of David but David faced the giant with courage you got to let the devil know I don't know what you're gonna throw at me and I don't care how glaring it comes I've got confidence in my God and he said the Goliath you come into me with a sword and a spear but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord the God of Israel and I just want to let you know that take the Lord along with you it doesn't matter what else you have take the Lord along with you you can meet every challenge if you take the Lord along with you you can stand against every giant if you take the Lord along with you I don't know how many are going out of town and how many are just going back to high school and how many are going to the elementary grades but wherever you going take the Lord along with you somebody is saying preacher I'm not even going to school I'm going to look for a job but you ought to tell three people I don't know where you're going but you be sure to take the Lord along with you You come to me with a sword and a spear, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And he wound up his slingshot, and God directed the rock to the giant's forehead. You may not have nothing but a rock, but I'm here to tell you God will give that rock radar. God will give that rock an automatic homing device and it'll find its target. Ah! Come on and tell somebody, all I have is a rock. But I declare this giant has to die. you talking about a rock what good can you do with a rock you need to get into the scripture and get the significance of the rock I hear David saying in the 61st Psalm hear my cry O God from the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee and when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to that rock that's higher than I and when Jesus comes on the scene he says upon this rock I'll build my church and I hear Isaiah in the 32nd chapter said behold a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment and a man shall be as an hiding place from the tempest and a covering from the storm he'll be as a great rock in a weary land and when I've got a rock, it simply means I got Jesus. He's the smitten rock. He's the rock of the ages. He's the precious cornerstone. He's the sure foundation. All I have is a rock, but I declare the giant must die. Ah! Woo! You ought to tell somebody I don't have my degree yet. But I got a rock. Ah! Tell somebody I haven't made my fortune yet. But oh, I got a rock. Ah! Hallelujah. And when the rock. <laughs> smote Goliath in his forehead he fell down dead and you know what David did David runs over gets up on his chest takes the giant's own sword 
and cuts off his head, sticks the end of it in the head, and goes through the camp holding up the head of the giant. I got to tell you something. I don't care how big your giant is. Face him with courage. Quit whining like somebody that's already been defeated. Hallelujah. I was, when I was down in, in, in Waco this past week uh, with Bishop A. Liddell Thomas, the night after I preached, Bishop Hamilton, W.W. W. Hamilton, our church secretary preached, and he preached about having a conqueror's attitude. If there's anything the church needs, and I'm talking about members of the body, we need a conqueror's attitude. He always whining, the devil, y'all pray for me. The devil is on my trail. The devil this and the devil that. I'm having such a hard time. The devil, the devil. You better say the devil with the devil. I'm more than a conqueror. I got Jesus on my by the hand and tell them, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but I believe God, and you've got the victory.
Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Sounds like victory in here. I hear the cry of victory. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Come on, give God a hand of praise and you can take your seats. I want to extend the invitation this afternoon for someone who is defeated, the devil has you in the clutches of his power and you cannot truly celebrate the victory because of the grip that Satan has on your life. If you have the power by your own ability to shake the devil loose, you couldn't do it and you would have done it by now. But you need Jesus in your life to defeat the Goliaths that's standing in front of you. The giants of drugs, the giants of alcoholism, the giants of illicit sexual activities. You by your own power cannot break the clutches of Satan on you. But if you get Jesus in your life, you plus God make the difference. I want to open the door of the church to someone who is, the Lord is leading to join this church. And then that backslider, you once known the presence of God in your life, but you allow Satan, the giants, to deceive you. I want you to come to the altar. That's right, my brother, come on. If you're tired of being defeated, tired of being destroyed by the hand of the enemy, I want you to stand to your feet and come down to the altar right now. We just want to pray with you. We want to show you the way. Hallelujah. That's right, my sister. Come on. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. That's right. Don't be ashamed. Oh, bless your name. Come on, come on, come on. Backslide, it's time for you to come home. You strayed away too long. Sinner, you've been lost too long. Today is your day. That's right. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. I feel deliverance in this place this afternoon. I feel God moving. And he's breaking the chains of Satan. That's right. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. If you're not tired of your ways, you stay where you are. But if you're tired of what the devil is doing to you, come on, stand right now. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. The Lord is yet speaking. To many of you, no matter what comes your way, your life is in his hand. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on, my sister. Come on. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Can't you feel the presence of God generally leading you to come on home? He's telling you today is your day. You put it off too long. Come on. Hallelujah. That's right, my brother. Come on. Hallelujah. You wasted too much time. That's right. Come on. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry and don't be afraid. Hallelujah. You know what happens? Joy comes in the morning and your troubles, they don't last always. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. There's a friend in Jesus. Anyone know Jesus? Wipe all of your tears away. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. If your heart is broken, hallelujah. Hit me out, choir. Come on with it. I know I can make it. Center backslider, come on to the altar. what comes my way my life is in his hand hallelujah there are many out here today that the Lord is speaking to concerning membership you fought and rebelled long enough 
But the presence of God is the sanction that you need to obey his voice. You feel the presence of God as he's leading you to join this place just as I stand and feel that same presence. And you only resist to your own destruction. But if you know God is leading you to this place, he doesn't have to explain to you why this is the place, but all he has to do is lead you. And if you're saved, living a life that the Lord wants you to live and know this is the place that he's designed for your spiritual nourishment, stand, be bold enough, and come to the altar right now. Hallelujah. That's right, my sisters. But I know that the Lord is speaking to saints who've been in the way for a long time. But God wants you to move out of the way and obey his will. That's right, my sister. Come on. I know he's speaking to you. Without a shadow of a doubt, I know he's talking to you. That's right. Come on. Hallelujah. There are others that the Lord is speaking to. I feel it. I feel the presence of God on me right now. I know you're here. Even in the fountain of life down the road. I can't see you, but God sees you. I don't know your situation, but God knows it. And if the Lord is speaking to you, obey his voice. Just go to the nearest usher, and they'll point you to the elevator or to the stairs, whichever way is quickest, and they're going to walk with you and come up so you can come to the altar and join these who are obeying the voice of God. Let the Lord speak to you and obey his command. Hallelujah. Up us on the main level in the balcony. Hallelujah. I know he's talking to you. Come on, choir. Let it ring. I agree with Elder Askew that there are yet other souls that the Lord has spoken to today. And I mean, you, you're right there. You, you're that close. You're closer than you've ever been. To heeding the voice of the Lord in either this matter of giving your life to Jesus or in the matter of making this your church home don't let the enemy win the devil of doubt the devil of uncertainty the giant is standing before you telling you don't don't do this don't do this but down in your spirit the Lord is saying Today is your day. Defeat that Goliath. Make the devil out what he is, a liar. And wherever you are, if you know the Lord is speaking to you, get up right this minute and hit to the nearest aisle. If you're in that balcony, get up. Go to the elevator. If you're out here in front of me, uh, over in the wing, that's right, young lady, come on. Uh, if you're downstairs in the fountain of life, head for the nearest stairway. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. In spite of the fact that these are here, the Lord is still speaking to another dozen people. There are 12 more of you that he's speaking to, and you know who you are. Come on. God bless you, young lady. Come on, come on. There are 11 more of you. Obey the Lord. The giant of doubt, the giant of unbelief, the giant of fear. Slay him today. Hallelujah. Come on and praise God, saints. The yokes are breaking. Come on, young lady. There's still 10 more. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. God bless you, my brother. Bless you, my sister. Nine, eight. Hallelujah. Come on, young lady. Seven more. Holy Ghost is calling you. Get in a hurry. Come on. Come on, young lady. Six more. Five more. Four more. Come on. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Give it praise. right come on my sister come on there are three more hallelujah praise the name of Jesus mm -hmm. my 
life is in your hand. Thank you, Jesus. I believe I'm yet waiting on two more. I don't know if you're downstairs in the basement or come on, hallelujah. Come on, my brother. And in my spirit, there's yet another. That's right, young man. Come on. Come on and praise God, saints. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 I know that many of these who have come are already saved and they've just come today for church membership, but many have come for salvation. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. But as we do so often, I just want one of you missionaries, sisters, to stand, put your hand on the shoulders of every one of these sisters. One of my minister brothers, our elders, put your hand on every man. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We extend our hands in love, and we also extend our hands as a sign of the power of God. And whatever may be in your life now that is not pleasing to God, the Lord told us in his word, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted. Whosoever sins we retain, they are retained. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you young people that are saved, love the Lord. You can see some from the front that may not be touched. Don't feel free to come down and lay your hand on one of them. Hallelujah. And saints that are at your seat. Join hands with one somebody next to you. Not a, not a chain, but a cell. Either one person, where there are two of you, no more than three linked together. Not a chain, that's right, not a chain. Hallelujah. God, our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the maker, the creator of the ends of the earth, and the giver of every good and perfect gift, we thank you for these souls who have come to thee on today. Lord, I thank you for these who have decided that they've got a rock. Jesus, that you are that rock. And with you, they'll face the giant with courage. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we pray that sin will be forgiven. Sins will be blotted out. Habits, oh God, that have gripped some of these. They slipped off into things they knew were not like you. They didn't intend to do it, but it happened. But oh my God, right now, a new heart and a new spirit and a new mind and a new power. Hey, Shaco of a heart. We claim it today, right now. Oh God, touch everyone. Everyone, even as we are joined hands across this building, as we are touching one another across this building, we rebuke the hand of the enemy and we tell Satan to come out. For when we are united together, there's nothing that Satan can do. The chain is not broken, but it is strong in you. Hallelujah! We exercise the power of your spirit. And we command sins to be rebuked and the power of the adversary to be broken. And from this day forward, we walk with new life and new strength and new courage. And we thank you now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Now listen, those who have come forward, 
I'm going to shake hands with you and whether you came to be saved or came for church membership or whatever, I want you to follow Elder Thompson and the workers that will be with him. God bless you. Go and follow him. Let, let me get these over here. Those of you in this corner, y'all come over here and shake my hand. Follow Elder Thompson. Don't go back to your seat, ladies, unless you need to get your purse. Hallelujah. But just go ahead on and follow. Hallelujah. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, young man. God bless you. God bless you. Come on and praise God, saints. God bless you. 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 God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, praise God. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Are they bringing them over now? All right. As soon as they get here, bring them. We're going to have a special prayer at this time with those who are going to be going back to school we're coming to the end of the summer uh, minister white where are you did he go okay minister white uh, has uh, put this program together today and i certainly want him to say something as our children's church are coming and they're going to come before us and the other uh, students and faculty people are going to come also and we're going to pray for these that are going back to school god bless you thank you bishop just briefly uh before before we uh are to leave i just wanted to make just a few acknowledgments of uh, you've seen this has been a glorious day hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus lord we thank you hallelujah thank you jesus i just want to just uh, i'm so full right now y'all excuse me let, let me mention these folks' uh, names real quick, and I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget. I want to make these brief acknowledgments and thank these people who've worked so hard. All of the young people here, all of the ones involved with the dramatization, even, even those of you tonight, we thank each and every last one of you. But more specifically for today, our orchestra, the one who is over the orchestra, Minister Elter Black. Um, for our flag girls in the stream was working with them was Sister Leslie Garth. <laughs> Sister Pat Hall, where are you? Work with the, hey amen. She's our resident seamstress. <laughs> and also Sister Bunny Weaver, who's also the teen ministry coordinator. <laughs> Sister Weaver, we thank her also. Um, from youth night. I don't know many of you who were here on last Sunday evening, but the Lord really blessed. And I want to say a special thank you to Sister Otanya Eskridge, who also worked with the dramatization at the beginning of The King is Coming. And also our choir, our choir under the leadership of trainer Kevin Davidson and Sister Tamara Ote. Amen. Now, from the other night, uh, Friday, we got rained out our little outdoor rally, but we came in and we still went out in the neighborhood witnessing. I'd like to thank three of the men of God who came out to be with us on that night, and that was Elder Jerry Malone, Minister Ingram, and also Minister Ricky Mosley. We'd like to thank them for being with us on Friday night out in the neighborhood, telling them them about Jesus Christ. Over our junior ushers is Sister Naomi McKnight. We thank her also. And please forgive me if there's someone whose name I have forgotten, uh, but the uh, young gentleman who uh, is a follower of the ministry but not a member here who did uh, the portrait of Bishop Patterson, Derek Forjoy, wasn't able to be here with us today, but we also want to thank him in his absence. Thank you, God bless you. Here's the microphone, Bishop. God bless you. 
all right, children's church, bring them as close to the steps as possible, and then the adult workers with the children can stand on the steps. That's right, all the way around, that's good. Now the young people that's in the choir, they're going to stay up here on this platform and, and stand just around. The preachers will be down here. Isn't this beautiful? Now the adult workers, adult workers with Children's Church during the prayer, I want you all on the steps so you can kind of help to direct. One or two of y'all can come up there now and help to direct. Oh, thank you, Jesus. sisters won't you pray for me school, it may be elementary, it may be high school, it may be college. You may go back as a student or as a faculty, a member of the school personnel, but if you want to be remembered in this prayer, just get as close around the front here as you can. Oh, 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 oh. Brothers and sisters, won't you pray? Pray for me. Oh, bless your sister Camilla. Glad to see you out there. When, when you bow, whenever you bow down at, oh, at the altar, I'm begging you, please. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just looked out and saw Sister Camilla Horton. I know she's in class somewhere out of the city. <laughs> Glad to see her today. And so many of you that's in college away from the city. Amen. I had prayer out at the office with Sister Valori Inge. She's getting ready to go on about a seven-month tour of countries across the waters. And uh, so many educational pursuits that's taking some far and others near. But the one thing we want you to do is take the Lord along with you wherever you're going. Amen. Uh, this is a great family prayer and although the focus is upon those who are connected with the school system but I just would that the whole church family now those involved in the educational 
position already standing but now let's everybody stand and hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. your name Jesus yeah oh God today we just say yes to your word and yes to your will and yes to your way oh heavenly father at this hour as we are coming to close to the end of the school well a long summer and back to the beginning of another school year we pray, Lord, that you would look upon every one of these, every one of these little ones, from those who will be enrolled in daycare, in kindergarten, into the elementary grades, and on up into their middle school, and into their junior high and high school, and into their college years, both undergraduate and postgraduates. Lord, look upon everyone, those who are going as students as well as those who go as members of faculty, others who work within the school system, whether it is in the cafeteria, in a janitorial capacity, or in an offertory capacity, Capacity. They may be in an office setting or wherever. They may only be involved in transporting children on the school buses or in their cars. But oh God, throw a wall of protection around everyone in the name of Jesus. Those of God who are taking special classes or whatever it may be, quicken the mind and quicken the understanding that they'll be able, oh God, to read and to maintain that which they read oh God don't let them just pass don't let them just be able to get by but give every one of these your people a super sensitivity that they'll excel in every class that they'll excel in whatever may be their particular vocation for Lord we know that you are our God that you are not only omnipotent but you are omniscient you've got all wisdom you've got all knowledge you've got all power and you told us in your word if any lack wisdom let him ask of God who give it liberally and abrade it not give your people wisdom knowledge and understanding and oh God throw a wall of protection in these dangerous days when bullets are flying over the school campus when knives and guns and all other kind of weapons both sophisticated and crude are in the hands of children oh my God protect your people shield from harm and protect from danger in the name of Jesus hallelujah oh God let faith be steadfast that every one of these, no matter what giant they face, they'll have it made up in their mind that they're going to live for you, that they're going to walk with you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Bless your people here. Bless your saints, Lord. Those who may not be involved in the educational realm, but just bless your saints. Bless us in our homes. Bless us on our jobs. Bless us in our neighborhood. Bless our coming in. Bless our going out. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. We're your people. We're the sheep of your pasture. We're the make of your hand. Yeah. 
Without you, we can do nothing, but we can do all things through Christ who is our strength. Yeah, yeah. My, 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 my. Touch right now, Lord. Everyone in the room, slow your hand down and reach down and touch us as we lift our hands up. Lord, reach your hand down. Touch us now. Touch us. Touch in the name of Jesus. Help us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Christ. And we'll thank you and we'll give you glory. Now, Lord, give traveling mercy, traveling grace for those who will go out of the city and those who remain just as they go through the streets. Let your hand of protection be there and we'll thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest and abide with each of us until we meet again. And all the Lord's people said, Amen. Now embrace at least three people and tell them, I love Jesus and I love you. Amen.